Hi everyone, my name is Nick and on behalf of American Family Insurance, welcome to the Dream Bank. Now here at Dream Bank, we believe that the future is brighter and the world is a better place when people are actively pursuing their dreams. And sometimes those dreams involve practicing creativity. Now in that spirit, I am very happy to have Stacy Ball with Stickman Painting Studio here with us today. And she's gonna be leading us through a step-by-step -step Midwest sunset painting. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Stacy, and I will turn things over to you. Hey there, everybody. It is Stacy from Stickman Painting Studio, and I am really excited to be here today. Because today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this really nice sunset with a silhouette of a tree. Well, let me move this out of the way here. So this is the painting. So if you want to go ahead, get settled, we will go and get started. I am excited. Okay, so are you ready? I am too. And below on the bottom of the screen there, it should list all the supplies we're going to need. But what I got here is you can either use a 12 by 24 or a 10 by 20 canvas. Or if you want to go a lot smaller, you could do a 6 by 12, which works really nice too. I got a variety of brushes here. And then I got a water cup. Feel free to pause me and grab fresh water whenever you need it. You can use either a paper towel or you can use a rag. That's what I got here. And then I got all the colors that you're going to be needing. So I got a red, a yellow, a blue, a purple, a white, and a black. And you can either use an, a palette or I'm just using a paper plate here, which works really, really nice. Okay. So if you want to take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And the paint we're using, I forgot to mention it, it is acrylic, so the nice thing is, once it dries, you can paint over any happy accidents, but if it dries on your clothes, you're going to want to get that out as quickly as possible if you find it wet. Once it's dry, it stays, okay? So I am starting out with a really nice flat brush here. This is a three-quarter inch brush, but just so you have a nice larger flat brush, my brush has definitely been used more than once. And I like my brushes when they've been used a few times because it's easier to spread the paint. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to start up here with this nice blue in the sky. And we're going to start with the sky and then slowly work our way forward. So if you want to go ahead, wet your brush. Go ahead. Ooh, looks like I got a little water splatter on my black. It's running. But then mix some of that water in with your blue paint. And then I'm going to start on one side. And if you notice here, I did not mix that water in very well. And this is a very good learning experience for you. But if you catch it before it goes too far, you can go ahead and wipe that away. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and dab some of that extra water out. And then I'll come back in here. There we go. Even us teachers make happy accidents. And I am making a streak of blue all the way across. You can have it be really sketchy, let the brush mark show real painterly, or you can smooth it out by just gliding it straight across. I'm doing my edges as well as I go along. And I only did about a brush width across. And if you are just starting and you're gliding without having paint all the way across, it might be hard to spread and smooth out. So smoothing your paint works best once you have paint on here. And I also want to mention too, because this is a recording, you can pause me, re remind me, rewind me whenever you need to. So don't feel like you have to be painting as fast as I am. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and 
I'm beating the devil out of my brush, as Bob Ross would say. And I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Feel free to rinse your brush out as many times as you need. And then once you are ready to move on here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some white so we can slowly have this fade, kind of like on the example over here. My paint is kind of mixing together here, but I'm not going to worry about it. But I am grabbing some white from the side so I don't dirty my paint. And then you can start on either side. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead, add some white in here, and then slowly bring it down probably about a third of the way. I'll slowly move this across and bring it down. And as you can see by doing that, I'm going to just wipe my brush off here. I'm not going to rinse it. Grab a little more white. And I'm going to add some here, bring it down. And I didn't start all the way up here. And you can tell that by doing that, it's slowly fading from blue to a lighter blue. The nice thing about a sky here is some areas might be lighter, some areas might be darker. And we do want to do this part by adding the white while the paint is still wet. So you don't want the blue to dry and then add it. There we go. So I'm just going to slowly bring that down. As you can see, some areas I'm going down further. From here to here, it is a lot lighter than over here. So I got a little white on here, and I'm just going to, there we go, kind of spread that out a little more just to even that out. And have a little more go down a little further than the rest. Grabbed a little more white, and I'm just going to go ahead back and forth and bring this paint down. And as you do this, you can go down, you can go back up, you can wrap this around the sides. Grab a little more white here, and I'm always grabbing from the side of the paint block. There we go. I'm just going back, adjusting some things. As you can see, I got a nice top part of my sky where some areas it's darker blue, some areas it's lighter blue. Now I'm going to go ahead, rinse my brush out. And it's very important that you rinse your brush out really good here. And if you need to grab fresh water, you can do that. I'm going to rinse it out really well. If you're still working on this, if you want to go ahead and pause me, and when you're ready to continue, you can hit play. I'm going to go ahead, just to make this easier, I'm going to flip my painting over. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my red next. So I'm just drying, there we go. Rinse my brush out really good. Move this here so you can see this part of the painting good. And as you can see, some of the red goes up high, some of it stays down low, comes up a little over here. And you're going to see some yellow here. Don't worry about the yellow just yet. I'm going to go ahead and grab in my red. Got a little blue in there, wiped it off. Put some little water in. And I'm going to start the same thing. Just going to make sure I mix the water in really well. I don't want to have some drips like I did before. But I'm going to start right here on this edge. You can wrap it around. When I say wrap around, if you're not sure what I mean, I'm just painting the sides as well. That way, when you decide to hang this, you don't have to worry about having white edges on your wall. There we 
bring some of this red up just a little higher in some areas. Why not? I'm going to rinse my brush out again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little more white. And like before, I'm going to put some white into my red and I'm going to kind of fade this way. Now some of this red might merge with the blue or come right up to it. But we want to have that nice, I guess you could call it an ombre effect where it starts light or darker and then gets lighter, vice versa. it over here a little bit and again you can have this painterly you can have it be a little more smooth and not have the marks show I'll leave that up to you it's the nice thing is everybody's paintings are different and unique in their own way wrap it around the edges I'm gonna bring just a little more red back here I want some of that red to stand out just a little more than what I got and you could do that with the blue too. Let's say you added a little too much white. Ooh, got a little yellow in there. Not ready for yellow yet. There we go. And you could darken up that lower edge and bring it down. Okay. And at this point, you know what? I'm just gonna smooth that out a little bit. Get a little more white. And then at this point, I'm going to let this dry. So I'm going to put my brush in my water cup. If you don't leave, like leaving your brushes in your water, you can definitely go ahead, rinse them out really good, leave them out. But once you are to this point, we're going to let this dry. And then we're going to come back and we're going to add the yellow. So if you're still working on this, keep working. But go ahead and pause me because when you come back, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start adding this yellow right in here. Okay. Okay, everybody. So by now your painting should be dry. And if it's still a little wet, you can always go and use a hair dryer to finish drying it. And moving forward too, if you want to do that, you can use a hair dryer as well. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this over just so I have it the right way now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to be adding this yellow in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just going to make sure my brush is nice and rinsed. There we go. And then if you wanted to grab some fresh water, now would be a good time to do that if you haven't already. And then the next thing I'm going to do with a nice clean brush so I'm just going to grab a little bit of yellow. You can always mix a little water in with it. And I'm going to start here in these white areas. And I'm going to go back and forth. And I'm going to spread it out. And I'm not adding any white to this. And as you can see, because yellow is pretty see-through, I'm getting some fun oranges down here. In the red, I'm getting some fun greens here that are going in the blue. It's making this a really, really nice, really nice sunset. You can wrap the yellow around the edges as well. with the yellow maybe add just a couple little extra wispies and I'll show you. So I got some little wispies going on where they're just kind of by themselves. Sometimes you see that in the sky just some little flicks of color that are kind of separate from from other colors. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and finish filling this in. 
So let me move this cup out of the way for you, just so you can see what I'm doing over here. And then once you have all of the yellow in, this would be really nice to do more so in the uh, red than the blue. I'm not going to do much more in the blue, but you could definitely maybe mix a little yellow and white together. Maybe even add a little bit of red in there to make an orange. And then if you want to add maybe just some fun little extra marks in here. Maybe you want to add a couple of reds into the, into the yellow. Just to get a little more wispy in the sky. You could even go in here with just some white. I'm going to go ahead and there we go. Okay, if you just kind of do some white in there and let it kind of mix. Maybe go in there with a little more red. And as you can see, this is starting to make a really nice, fun sunset. I'm going to rinse my brush out every now and again. Add a little more white in here. And I'm not adding a lot of paint to my brush. If you notice that you're having a hard time spreading the paint out or it's just getting too globby, Let's say you just grab a lot and you don't want that much. Go ahead and just kind of scrape some of that extra off. Don't rinse your brush out. And then you can add some of that in here because sometimes just less paint on the brush is more. Add a little bit of white in here. I want to blend that out a little bit. Yeah. And then I think I'm going to leave this Oh wait, spoke too soon. There we go. There we go. Now I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to put my brush in the water. I like leaving my brush in the water because that way later it won't get crusty. I don't rinse it out very good before I clean them. And I'm going to leave this just like this. So go ahead, keep working on this. If you need to rewind, go ahead, rewind. Otherwise, go ahead and pause me. And then once you are ready to move on, just hit play. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add these really fun, move that over for you, these really fun clouds. All right, and I'll see you back soon. Okay, everybody, welcome back. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in these purple clouds. Let me see if I can, there we go. So as you can see, there are different shapes and sizes. Some of them go off the canvas so they look like they're floating by. Some go all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to keep them mainly kind of up here and then off to the side. If you want to put some behind the tree, you can. Um, but I'm going to keep this spot over here in this area more empty, just so the, the clouds behind don't take away from the tree. All right. So we've been using that big brush this whole time, and now I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. It can be flat. It can be round. So here's the one I got here. I'm using a round brush, but you can use a flat brush. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a little purple, go up to the side, take a little white, mix them together. And I want kind of like a light, not super light, but not super dark purple. So kind of a nice middle purple there. There we go. 
And then once I got my purple set and ready to go, you can mix water in with it if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start over here and work my way over. And I'll start with the outline. So I'm just going to kind of make some kind of like little squiggles here and kind of smooth out towards the bottom there. But if you notice, I kept this more flat here and then it's a little more uh, fluffy on top. But they all don't have to be that way. This one here could kind of there we go. You could even add a little extra wispy there. Maybe come down and go there. And as you can see, I just kind of did more like a squiggle. And as you're going along, you can fill them in all the way. You could leave some of the sky showing through. They're clouds. So you might be able to see through some of them. add another one here and they can be on the same plane and it's easier for you to kind of make that line like this and then kind of come up here maybe have a little wispy on top of that one and then come down and I'm just going to kind of continue with these wispy marks If you run out of purple, you can always mix more. The nice thing about these clouds is if the purple is slightly different, that's okay. And add another one here. I think I'll go ahead and do that line first and then there we go. And fill it in. get this out of the way. It's kind of blocked in there. As you go, if you want to have a lot of clouds, not so many clouds, I'll leave that up to you. I'm doing my best to kind of have it match the example, but at the same time, it's going to be slightly different. I think I'll add one more here. That's a little wispy. Add another wispy one here. Fill it in. Let some of the background show as well. And then I think I'll just add a tiny one here. It's not going to be as big as the one on the example, and that's okay. And now that I have these on here, I didn't rinse my brush out, but you can. I'll go in with some regular purple, and while this is still wet, I'll wipe the extra off though. Kind of go in, add some shadows. You could even go in with some white. Maybe get some highlights on there. Feel free to go back and forth. Also feel free to, if you want to work with all three colors at once, once you get a good grasp on how to make these clouds. Maybe you want to start with that middle color, that middle purple, and then go in, add some highlights, add some shadows with the darker purple. I'll leave that up to you. But we want to think nice and wispy. These are not storm clouds, so these are a little more on the fluffy side. And I learned something about clouds. Even the lightest, fluffiest ones, they look light and fluffy, but they actually weigh like hundreds of thousands of pounds. 
which is crazy to think about. And if you don't like how a cloud's looking, you can always go back and then touch it up. And also remember too, if you put too much paint on here, on your brush, you can always wipe the extra off and then just kind of work with what's on the brush and what's on the canvas. Sometimes less is more. even work on all of these at the same time. This is yours. This is kind of what I have so far. I'm still working, but see that they're slowly starting to come together. I'm just using a little squiggly, wispy lines still. to let this be. So go ahead, keep working on these. Feel free to rewind me. Go back. Once some of these dry a little bit, you could always add a few more layers if you'd like, especially with some of this white, some of that deeper purple. Okay. You might even want to go in here, maybe add a few more little wisps trailing off. I'll leave that up to you. But I think I'm happy with my clouds, so I'm going to leave them be. There you go. Nice, nice, happy little clouds in the sky there. And then once we continue on, we're going to do the last step, which is going to be putting in this ground and this tree, which I'm really excited for. So I will see you back soon. Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you're having a great time painting your really nice sunset painting. Now we are in the final stretch here, woohoo! And we are gonna be putting in this ground here and also this really nice silhouetted tree. So I hope you're ready. And if you wanna go ahead, I'm gonna be taking a nice flat brush this time. And I'm going to be using some black paint. So if you want to go ahead, you can. I'm going to bring my water cup back around here. Keep it over here. And I'm going to go ahead and mix some water in with some black. And then I'm going to start a little ways up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of angle down so it looks like. Our tree's going on a hill. And if you want to fill it in, you can definitely use this smaller brush, or if you want to switch to a larger brush, I'll leave that up to you. And here, it doesn't have to be perfectly filled in. It can have texture. It's okay if it's a little sloppy. We're just painting a silhouetted ground. Now once I have that filled in or blocked in, I'm going to go ahead and kind of pull some of this paint up so it looks like there's some grass. And you 
you could have some smaller areas. You could have it be a little wider in some other areas. But I'm doing this while this paint is still wet. Because if you let it dry, you might get a line that you don't want. If you need, if you're on an easel, if you need to lift your painting up a little bit there, just so you get all the way to the bottom edge here. All right, and there we go. We'll just do a few little touch-ups. There we go. You can wrap this around the side if you want, and on the bottom if you want to, just so it's continuous. And then once you have this part done, we're moving on to a tree. So deep breaths, let it out. Now trees, they can be a little scary, but one thing I want to let you know is that no tree is the same. They have bends, they have curves. If you look at this tree, it is not perfectly made. It has some little quirks, it has some little bumps. So yours can too. And mine's gonna look a little different, yours is gonna look a little different, and that's what we want. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, sticking with the same brush here, and I'm just gonna start with one line, and it's gonna kinda start our, kinda start our tree, and then I'm gonna have it kinda go off, branch off, haha. <laughs> And make a branch up there. And I'm going to keep it continuous. I'm going to take my time. And then this one will go into this, into this cloud here. And if it's going on a little, if it's not going on real smooth, it's going on a little stiffer, just remember the water trick and to mix it in really good with your paint. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start off on the side here. It's gonna bend and curve as well, and then I'm gonna have it slowly, gradually mesh with the tree. I'll do the same thing on the other side. It kind of comes up here and then slowly goes in. And I'll go ahead and fill it in. And as you can see from filling in, I got a little thing here that looks like a branch almost fell off or broke off. So I'm going to, there we go, kind of make it really look that way. There we go. And then once you are to this point, we're going to have some of the smaller branches come off here. I know they're kind of hard to see with the tree, with all the leaves on it. But I'm going to have some, and I'm taking my time. And they're going to kind. I'm going to keep mine curvy. And then I can also kind of like I did with the trunk, kind of extend it there so it gets a little bigger. You could use a small brush for this if you feel like the medium brush is too big. And I also recommend a smaller brush for the branches if you're pushing down really hard. That way, they'll stay a little smaller. But with these branches, if you don't like one, just put a lot of leaves on top. Take your time. I'm not going to add a lot of branches just because we're going to be putting a lot of leaves on. I think I'm going to add one more coming off here and then coming down there. There we go. And then I think I will maybe have one kind of come in here. There we go. Kind of widen it there a little bit. 
We could even have maybe another one kind of coming there. I think I like that. So go ahead, take your time, add as many branches as you want. And then once you are ready, let's see, do I got a brush that will look really good for this? Yes. So if you've been painting with me for a while, you might have some brushes that have gotten overloved. And I grabbed an overloved brush here. These brushes that kind of flare out all over the place, especially these medium brushes, work great for making leaves. I'm going to fill my brush up here. There we go. And then I'm going to start off slowly. And I'm just going to dab. sure. I don't know if you can see from here, but you're going to make a dab. You can rotate your brush, make another dab, and then just keep going. You can have a lot of these dabs overlap. They can go in places where there are no branches, because on trees there are leaves that kind of hang and dangle down and cover up em empty areas. Or there might be a branch that you don't see and there's a leaf there. And if you feel like this is just going on a little too small and you want some bigger leaves, you can always grab, if you got that bigger brush and it's a little wonky as well, you can always grab that too. And you could go back and forth with both of them. You could have some of these to vary the texture a little bit. So I'm going to go around here. And I am slowly turning this brush as well. And I made my brush, or my brush, my tree a little bigger, so it is going off the canvas a little bit on top compared to this one. And that's okay. I do that too. My tree is just large and in charge. So I got some of those there and then I'm going to go back to my wonky medium brush that looks like it needs a haircut. And I'll add some of those in here too just so I get a little more texture. And it's okay to have some areas where you can see through because in real life that happens. Maybe I'll look, have it look like some are falling. You know, have fun. Go crazy. Get creative. Could even have some going on the main trunk there. Yeah. And you may, just like me, cover up some of your clouds that you didn't want to. But I can still see it coming through. It gives it another layer of uh, texture there, and it kind of gives it a little more of a 3D effect. So it looks like those are behind, and the tree is in front. And I'm just going to go over with my larger brush one more time. And then I could do this all day. This is very soothing, but I think I got to end it. Otherwise, I might just get a little too carried away. But take your time. And then once you are ready, I'm going to go ahead and initial mine. I always do it in the lower right hand corner. But wherever you want to, you can initial it. You could do it on the side. You could do it on the back. And then there's mine. I think it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And then when you are done with yours, make sure to share a picture of it in the comments below because I know a lot of other people, including myself, would love to see your final creation. And on that note, I want to thank you so much for painting with me today. 
and I hope to paint with you again soon. Have a great rest of your day.